hello nurses and future nurses welcome back to my youtube channel and on today's episode of nurse clement b i am going to teach you on how to transfuse the blood to your patients and in this video i'm going to use a checklist which says that perform transfuse those patients with the blood products before you under the following headings the responsibilities of nurses before during and after blood transfusion remember i'm going to dwell on these responsibilities of nurses before blood transfusion during blood transfusion and after blood transfusion so thank you for watching all my videos thank you for your support thank you thank you please keep supporting me sit back and watch this video to the end do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I still remain your nurse, Clement B. And if you have any comments, please drop it at the comment section. And if you have any procedure that you want me to do, please drop it also at the comment section. I will be there to attend to you. Thank you very much. So, for us to know our requirements. Of course, in nursing, I keep repeating this. If you are going to perform any procedure in nursing you must set your requirements and of course those are my requirements it's a trolley procedure of course you must have a tpr tray you can come closer you must have a tpr tray right the tpr tray you have the wet swap and dry swap and of course your bp apparatus of course pulse oximeter and and thermometer my TPR tray is set and a tray. kidney dish for you swap, right? So this is my TPR tray. And of course, you must have an emergency tray. Emergency tray containing fluids, no mass line, right? And then blood giving sets and then um, fluid giving sets. Of course, you must have syringe and needle hydrocortisone, promethazine, and sterile water for dilution of the medication in case of any emergency, in case of um, reaction, blood reaction from the patient. Of course, you must have the blood itself. You must have the blood itself, and you must have the blood itself. So, and of course, you must have your patient's folder. Remember, if your hospital, if the hospital, during exams, of course, remember, you must take the prescription sheets and all the forms from the lab, the, the screening, the investigation that has been done from the lab is in the patient's folder. So you have to take it along, right? It's part of your requirement so that you can cross-check, right? So I place my patient's um, folder the next step, when you're carrying out the responsibilities of a nurse during, remember, it's on the three top uh, headings, before, during, and after. So, before the transfusion, right, you have to intro uh, introduce yourself to your patient. Greet and introduce to your, yourself to your patient. Of course, this is my patient. Hello, good morning. I am nurse Clement B. I am going to, I'll be your nurse for today, and I'm going to... I'm here to transfuse blood for you. Please, can you tell me your full name and your full date of birth? Okay, you are Chuku Emeka Eze. Okay, fine. You, after doing this, you have to cross-check it with the information you are having in the folder, right? The information you have to cross-check. So I cross-check it twice and I've confirmed that this is the right patient. This is very important. B is during exams and as a professional nurse, identification of your patient is very important so that you will not perform procedure on the wrong patient, right? So I cross-check the information. It corresponds with what I'm having here and I've identified that this is the right patient that I'm going to transfuse blood to. So go ahead and then explain to the patient you take informed consent by explaining the procedure to your patient, right? So I'm here to transfuse blood to you. Remember, your blood level is it's low. The pack cells, that means the red aspect of the blood, it's, it's low, right? So I'm here to transfuse this, uh, the blood to you. So please, during this blood transfusion, if you do have any reaction like fever, like chills, rashes, 
anything of that you feel abnormal in your system please help me call my attention and immediately i will attend to you do not keep anything to yourself i will use the blood itself in a bag with um given set and i'll put it through this do you understand i'm going to put it through this can i go ahead all right the patient may say yes and the patient may say no well in this case the patient said yes so i'm going to go ahead get my my requirements um uh, bring the blood and other things to transfuse this blood right so now that i've identified this patient remember we are i am doing the responsibility before right before the transfusion so now i pick up the blood remember before you transfuse any patients just take note that do not keep the blood for long in the ward make sure that you bring the blood at least 15 minutes to 10 minutes before you transfuse the patient blood do not allow it stay long make sure that you check the, the temperature of the blood right check the temperature if the blood is too cold please put it on that erroneous tap water put it so that it will cool off do not put do not microwave blood do not put it inside hot water please do not do that so hope you are enjoying this video this procedure um another way for you to uh, bring the blood to uh, room temperature is for you to fetch water in a bowl and then remember the water should be room temperature then you place you dip the blood back inside the bowl so that it can bring down it can make the blood to be in room temperature right so please even when you are going to use a tap do not make the tap to rush let it be like flowing gradually these are two options that you can make your the blood to become room temperature when the blood is too cold this blood i want to make the blood to a uh, room temperature i'm going to perform hand hygiene and then put on my glove right so follow me let's go and wash perform hand hygiene and put on my glove so i have performed hand hygiene and i'm done in my glove very important very important you have to don your glove of course course all right so um, remember this is a clean procedure so i've done my glove and i want to go and warm this water to to warm the blood to room temperature it's cold so remember i've said that you have to use um runny tap do not microwave do not put it inside hot we are still on the responsibilities of nurses before blood transfusion now the information that you have on the folder consigning from the lab of course from the lab you have to cross check cross check the blood group is it cross matching the cross the cross match uh, the blood group SS factor mm? cross check hiv hepatitis screening all of this cross check it so that the page so that you will not transfuse wrong blood to the wrong patient right so i have done that these are some of the responsibilities before blood transfusion also check pre-medication before blood transfusion of course this patient has been placed on prismide before uh, blood transfusion and i have to administer this um, prismide before blood transfusion i permit me this is my prismide i make sure that um remember during examination do not open the syringe and needle like this always make sure that you peel it down you peel it right and then you fix the needle this way and you have prepared your syringe and needle then so avoid pricking your hand also make sure that you have something cotton wool um cotton wool or gauze support and then break so remember that this is a patient uh, this is a dummy so i cannot uh, administer directly so i have withdrawn my um first might and i want to give this patient right and then uh, right i open the cannula and i push the medication push um first might i have administered pre-transfusion 
medication so i'm done administering the pre-transfusion medication and of course i have to discuss my insights the syringe i need to inside a sharp box so now i have to take this patient's vital signs very important so i take during exams during OSCE, of course do not forget permit me to use this hand because it's proximal to me so do not say i will take my i will take the patient and uh, bp no kindly always place the cough in the patient's hand place it so i can also use the hand distal to me right remember this is a dummy so make sure that you put the bp apparatus the core patient arm right you can decide to even leave it there because you are coming for some minutes and also press the start button and place it thick then take the temperature isn't it make sure that you clean down the skirt inside receiver and you can use this hand that is proximal to you and place the thermometer right also place the pulse oximeter on the patient's hand making sure that it's on and it's working so you place it take it now this is the pre transfusion vital signs i assume i've I'm done taking these vital signs. I disconnect and I check, making sure that I've checked the, all the readings and I discard. I return it back to its container. So the next thing, I record. While you are doing this, make sure that you keep recording so that you don't forget. Remember, it's a continuous process, right? So the next thing is for you now to what? You have checked all, all, all the necessary information concerning this blood, right? So the next thing is for us to set. Making sure that you check, set, fix the blood giving set to the blood back, after which you hang it to the drip stand. Make sure you hang it. After hanging it, make sure that you expel air. Please, I urge students and nurses, do not expel air while on the floor, right? Get a gallipot, receiver, something, and make sure that you expel the air inside the receiver this way. Do not spill on the ground. Make sure you expel the air. As you can see, it's moving. So I expel the air, right? After expelling air, I discard the receiver, then I count the drop factor. How many drop per minute? I calculate the drop, calculate the drop before you fix. So this, as I assume that this, uh, it has been prescribed for this patient, 15 drop per minute. So I calculate and I fix the blood, right? As the blood, the blood temperature, it's okay, room temperature. And then I connect, since the patient is on cannula already, right? Open the cannula and it's not blocked. Make sure that it's not blocked and then fix it. And then fix it to the cannula. Make sure. Then you regulate it to the drop, 15 drop per minute. So I have fixed and I have opened it. 15. I have fixed the blood. Um, remember, these are the responsibilities. Now you have to do the responsibilities of a nurse during blood transfusion. And one of the responsibilities is for you to keep checking the patient's vital signs. Five, five minutes, 10, 10 minutes, 15, 15 or 30 minutes, depending on the condition of the patient, right? So I keep checking the uh, vital signs of this patient. I still replace back the pulse oximeter. Remember, you can also even leave the pulse oximeter there as I left this one here so that you can be checking after five minutes or ten minutes then you come and press start is that while this one is reading and then you keep putting the thermometer also so now these are my responsibilities 
um, during blood transfusion. And I keep monitoring the patients for any um, blood reaction, right? So if there is any blood reaction, I check, I keep asking the patient, are you okay? Do you feel okay? Is there any discomfort or anything, right? So this patient is not reacting to this blood. And I keep, I've checked the patient's um, vital signs. So, and I remember as you're checking the patient's vital signs, you keep recording. You keep recording the patient's vital signs. Each time you take, please record it. Very important, right? So, this, let's assume now, remember this is a dummy. Let's assume now the blood has finished, right? And want to disconnect. Remember, I said that this patient did not react to the blood transfusion. So, after disconnecting the blood, Remove the blood back from the stand. Remove the blood back. Go and keep the blood back in the place, appropriate place in the ward where you normally keep the blood back after blood transfusion. Remember, you will not discard this till after 48 hours, at least after 48 hours. So you go and keep the blood back, right? So after which you, in case the patient may react later, so you have some blood product that you can take it to the lab for tests to know why the patient reacted to this blood, right? So, and in case, remember, I have an emergency trick. In case this patient reacted to this blood, in case the patient reacted to this blood, immediately I will discontinue the blood transfusion and then fix normal saline. Of course, I will just fix normal saline immediately after fixing it and then I will administer dilute hydrocortisone of course i have my sterile water i would dilute it immediately administer to these patients after administering the um the emergency drug has been prescribed so uh, i leave the patient to see the recovery of the patient and immediately i was then sent for call sent the for call to the doctor that is on duty right after which you are done. Remember, you have been recording all the information all while we are carrying out the procedure. So, now I am done uh, transfusing this blood. The patient may react or not react to the blood transfusion. I hope this video is helpful. Remember, after doing all this, you have to remove your glove. And as situation demands, you keep changing the glove, right? So, I'm done with the procedure. I'm going to remove my glue, remove the glue, and discard, of course, inside a receiver for use, and then I'll go and perform hand hygiene. After performing hand hygiene, of course, then I'll come and record. So follow me, let's go and perform hand hygiene. I'm done performing hand hygiene. Of course, I'll continue recording, recording the information, what I've done on this patient. Remember, in nursing, any procedure you carry out without recording a procedure, that means you haven't carried out any procedure. So I'll continue recording the information, what I have done to this patient, whether the patient has reacted or not. You have to record, record everything, which is very important. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you stay with me till the end. Thank you for watching my videos. Please do not forget to like and share and share this video to other groups, to nurses around the world. I love you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.